This week on The Record, I catch up with Terry Clark to talk about her new album of duets, Take Two, covering eight of her biggest hits, including I Just Wanna Be Mad, featuring Cody Johnson. Well, Terry talks about why she was excited to have him join her on this project. He's like got the entertainment value of a Garth Brooks and the song mm -hmm. sense of a Tim McGraw and the lifestyle of George Strait. You take all these icons and put them together and you've got Cody Johnson. Take Two, an eight song project by Terry Clark giving fans a duets version of her hits, including her debut song back in 1995. Joining her on Better Things To Do, an artist who was influenced by Terry and her music, Ashley McBride. She's told me so often how that first album impacted her when she was a kid and um, you know, seeing the hat and the t-shirt sleeve, she's like, there's a girl like me. I can, I don't have to be like everybody else. After a couple of fast driving female anthem songs, Terry would deliver some vulnerability, a song that she was the sole writer of, covering a topic that was very personal to her called, If I Were You. I would call my friends and ask for marriage counseling over the phone and I'd spend three hours on the phone with them. I got off the phone with her and I sat down at the table and 90 minutes later I had this song. record from the John Deere stage. We are spending this time talking about a new duets album called Take Two from the one and the only, our good friend, Terry Clark. Good to see you. Hi, Suzanne. Good so, to see you. So, you know, listen, of course, first of all, thanks for coming back to On the Record. Last time you were here, it wasn't on camera, but you kind of were teasing a little bit that this was a project that was something that you were thinking about, and here you are. Long time coming for you? It has been, uh, you know, the concept came along probably two, two and a half years ago. And we actually started talking about it even longer than that. And then COVID happened and everything kind of got put on the back burner. But yeah, we uh, we started about a year and a half ago. And it's just, you know, a, a small miracle getting all of these big names, yeah. schedules together to, to be able to get this finished. And the legalities involved, there's a lot of, a lot of cooks in the kitchen on something like this. Um, so we finally got it all wrapped up and taken care of and got everybody in there and it's and it's finally finished but I did know about it last time I was here I just wasn't allowed to talk wasn't about it yet to say. right well obviously it was worth waiting for a nice surprise for all of your fans this is something though I, I want to go back we talked about this last time it was mid 90s right 95 mm -hmm. Martina Reba Trisha Yearwood a Shania yeah we're talking big hair we're talking <laughs> um you know different clothing and you came out made like a really name for yourself kind of finding your place in country music cowboy hat wearing wrangler jeans i said your songs that you broke through with these were empowering female anthem like songs for women that we really weren't hearing at that time so I'm thinking, how are you going to have the guys on this, you know, on this album, on these songs, and really kind of work that in and make it work? And you did. Specifically, I want to talk about Cody Johnson. I just want to be mad. Great, great song. Oh. It sounds like that was meant to be. It, it was. Uh, I, I admire Cody, and I, I will say he, he's he is such a great singer. He's such a great talent. He's uniquely himself but he's like got the entertainment value of a Garth Brooks and the song mm -hmm. sense of a Tim McGraw and the lifestyle of George Strait. You take all these icons and put them together and you've got Cody Johnson. He's just uh, so amazing. And I had never met him, but a fan of his voice and his music. And when we came together to do this, it started out as text messages. He called me um, and he says, well, what, I, I want to do this. He said, what songs are you thinking? And I named A Little Gasoline, I Just mm -hmm. Want to Be Mad, and a song called She Didn't Have Time. And he listened to all three. And at first he was thinking the ballad, and then he came back again. He said, the more I listen to I, I Just Want to Be Mad, and I'm, I've been a fan of that song. He said, I, I think that makes the best duet. And he wasn't able to come in when we tracked it with the musicians, but we talked through it quite a bit and that 
it needed to toughen up and it needed to slow down a bit. And, you know, with great mus musicians like Adam Schoenfeld and a great engineer and all the people we had in the studio um, that have also worked with Cody in the past, it was it was pretty easy to get the track that sounded like something that he could really sink his teeth into. And he and when he came in to sing on it, it was just magic because we started splitting up lines. I was going to ask you about the structure of yeah. that, by the way. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting how you did that. It sounds like, like I said, it was meant to be. I, I would never hear that as a duet, knowing the original version by you. Well, in a lot of cases, when I do a duet with another male artist, there's a key change somewhere in the middle of the song. And it's a big mm -hmm. key change. And one of us takes the first half of the song and the other one takes the other half of the song and we harmonize, you know, vice versa. But this time, just revisiting that lyric after I've been singing it and singing it mm -hmm. and singing it for so long and actually looking at the lyric typed out on a piece of paper, which I hadn't done in so long because I've got it committed to memory. I just started thinking, man, if there's a way, if I wanted Cody to start the song. Uh, if there was a way I could pop in there somewhere before the second verse so that people, mm -hmm. hey, I'm right over here, you know. Right. But man, the melody is going to be in his key. That's going to be hard. So when he came in, we really talked about how we could do it. And I had already done a lot of my vocal. Um, so we were focused on his, but it was like, I, I did cut a line where I changed the melody in the first verse, and it was it's pretty high up in my range because I'm singing a whole octave higher than he is. So he started to do that in the back half of the song. And the next thing you know, we're trading off lines. Mm -hmm. I think I'm right. I think you're wrong. You know, it's it's just two people having a real conversation with a melody. That's what the whole thing feels like now. And, and I, it's, it may be my favorite one on the whole project. Really just so perfect outside the genre. Um, one of your songs, and I really, I mean, now that I found you, really the first time, I think really that we really got to see you vulnerable. I mean, mm -hmm. if I were you, was that, but this was, now that I found you, was really your love song that we saw a different side of Terry Clark back then, getting Ben Rector out of the format to sing with you on this one. And from, from the history on this song, if I'm not mistaken, and I did do my research, by the way, that you were hesitant because you felt like this was a, more of a pop song. Yeah, when I first heard Now That I Found You in 1998, it sounded like a pop song. And mm -hmm. uh, my producer, Keith Stegall, played it for me in his office. And he said, I just got this demo from L.A., and he played it for me, and it was very R&B. And I'm like, I'm not sure I'm making the, the connection here. And he said, well, let's let's record it and see how it comes out. And, um, you know, if if you still don't like it, we don't have to put it on the record. Well, not only did I like it, but it became the first single. And to this day, it's like the only love Mm -hmm. real like love ballad that I've ever had any success with so it's always a joke in my show about how most people get divorced to my songs but I had to have one that they would get <laughs> married to and, and this one's it but Ben Rector is somebody I've always been a fan of he's so incredibly talented I love his music um, I mean I listened to him I listened to him on playlists and stuff so you know when when this this song started to go through my mind, how could it be rearranged as a duet? I thought of him automatically. He's a great keyboard player too. Mm -hmm. And we tracked this with a filtered acoustic piano. And the original version that I recorded has a lot of acoustic guitar on it. So right away, and then we've got this really, uh, really contemporary sounding percussion mm -hmm. thing going on. And uh, once it was done, I just hired a string section and mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, it just needs that one little more level mm -hmm. of, of you know, layer at the end. I see the heavens open, my heart that once was broken, is holding nothing back, now that I found you. And it just really soars, and I'm so proud of that one, and I so just, So pretty, it really is, you. really is pretty production. It's very, it's very romantic. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I absolutely loved working with him and he's brilliant. He was there for tracking and, and that arrangement has a lot to do with his input and his ideas too. Well, we are breaking it down and talking about this, I, you know, Duet's project. I've heard collaborative. I've heard uh, your, your biggest songs reimagined. However you want to say it, <laughs> take two. That's what we're talking about with Terry Clark. A lot more when we come back right here on the record. And then to grow up and uh, be able to meet my hero and then find out when we met that we were just destined to be friends. I have to give myself a gut check so often.
in the studio with Terry Clark. This is On the Record, take two, eight song project, and we just rolled in with better things to do. You cannot do a project without including that. Your very oh, first, no. number one, 1995, yeah. out of the gate, bam. How great to put this on the record. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it, that's one of the ones where we got in there and like, well, we want to refresh these versions. We want to change them. But ee, is it like painting a mustache on the Mona Lisa if you change some of these too much? <laughs> Especially something like that. Kind of yeah. like those, those, those feisty, anthemic, sort of strong mm. female songs like that that are tempo and rocking. We just rocked harder with it. We just, we just started the rocking from the beginning instead of, you know, building it like the original version mm -hmm. had. And Ashley McBride was the perfect singer to, to do this with. And she's a friend. And um, she she's told me so often how that first album impacted her when she was a kid. And, um, you know, seeing the hat and the T-shirt sleeve, she's like, there's a girl like me. I can I don't have to be like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that means more to me than she, she'll ever know to hear that that I encouraged her her individuality. I think we're, we're also I don't know. We're taking phone calls right now. Caller. Uh, Go ahead. You're on with Terry Clark. Hey, Terry. It's Ashley. Oh, oh <laughs> Ashley what McBride <laughs> calling in right now for On the Record. Were your ears ringing? We were just talking about you. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting here thinking, you know what I should do? I should call Terry real quick. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm getting ready for the Opry tonight. Oh, amazing. Well, I'm just sitting here talking about how awesome you are and and how great you were singing better things to do with me. Thank you so much for doing that. Oh, absolutely. I was so thrilled when, first of all, when you told me that you were going to do this project. And then you're like, I, I, I'm going to sing. I'm going to pull some people in to sing on it. And I thought, well, that's wonderful. And then one of those was me. So that was even better. Well, you're, you're on V1, the one that, uh, that you and I were actually, un, unbeknownst to me, introduced to each other, although you were maybe just a little younger than me. Um, and it, you just mean so much to me. And I love you so much for that song's very special because it started the whole thing for me. And I, there's nobody on the planet that I would rather have uh, reimagined that and sung that that song with. So thank you for doing it. Oh, so, so happy to. Plus, I got to show off that uh, most of my licks, my vocal riffs are yours. <laughs> Do I get royalties on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we can find a way to do a kickback on that. Oh, well, I'm flattered. You're one of the greatest singers on the planet. So. Hey, Ashley, I've got a question for you. You know, going back, you know, and talking about these songs, and, and as Terry mentioned, gosh, this came out in 95. You weren't even a teenager. You were just a little kid at that point. So talk about hearing these songs at that time and what Terry's music really meant to you when you look at mid-90s and what was going on in country music and what Terry was doing then, I think really spoke to a lot of young women and let them know that, hey, I can take control of my own life. Yeah, and there was, I was lucky, we were lucky growing up when there were so many strong females on country radio. And you could, you could get that strength in all kinds of different flavors and seasonings. And for me, when I found Terry, she was in a T-shirt with the sleeves rolled up and a cowboy hat. She, she looked like I looked. And I remember watching her on like, CMT, on music videos, and she, she rocked. She wasn't afraid to be like, she didn't seem, she didn't come off as fragile or anything in any way. Um, and it was, it was nice to see Feminine as a strength mm. instead of um, instead of it per portrayed in any other way. So it was wonderful to be like, this girl is like me. This is the kind of stuff I do. This is the kind of thing I sound like. This is, so I was, I got to see um, people like me represented because where I'm from, we all wore jeans and boots and t-shirts and got our hands dirty. And she she was one of those artists that consistently every record she put out. I could listen to front to back. I've never skipped a song. Mm. Um, and, and I joke about stealing some of her vocal riffs, but when Boy Meets Girl came out, I went to Walmart and bought that um, on the cassette, the single cassette. Wow. Because I had to, I had to be able to do girl. I had to be able to flip. I had to make the word girl 16 syllables. Like I needed to be able to make them, those notes in there like that. Um, and then to grow up and 
uh, be able to meet my hero and then find out when we met that we were just destined to be friends. I have to give myself a gut check so often because Mm -hmm. so many versions in 95, I mean, I don't want to give my age away, but I don't mean, I I guess I don't care. I was 12. Oh, I was turning 13. Oh, that hurts, that by hurts the way. Me. <laughs> oh, does it hurt? Well, it's, it's a really important time, especially in a musician's life, mm-hmm. guy or girl. Um, the music that you're listening to then, the music that you are choosing for yourself then, becomes the seasoning and the flavor of everything you will do when you are the musician that you're going to be. Yeah. Well said. Well said. You know, it's interesting that you pointed that out too. getting to meet. Sometimes they say you don't want to meet your heroes, right? You just don't know. Obviously, in this case, you guys have uh, really kind of formed such a strong friendship and a strong bond and getting to work together now. Mm -hmm. It's got to be incredible. Just a a full circle moment. Obviously, Ashley, for you and Terry, for you, when you see, you know, having a, a, a young fan like that be influenced by your music and then coming up and being able to mentor a lot of these artists that are now coming up through the ranks. It's got to be amazing. It, it, it's amazing because I, I can't tell you how many county fairs I played through the, the late 90s into the 2000s and how many moms brought their daughters for me to sign their guitar and said mm-hmm. she started taking lessons and she wants to be a country singer when she grows up. And I can't tell you how many times it ran through my mind. I wonder if any of these little girls are going to grow up and be a, be a thing. I mean, mm. is it gonna, are they going to get famous? Am I really influencing somebody mm. from this generation? Is it really going to happen for somebody? And they're actually going to talk about me someday. And Ashley McBride comes along and starts talking about me. I'm getting teary because, yeah. you know, you don't realize um, what's happening at the time and you don't know because there, there, I know there've been so many people influenced by Reba, including myself, and she hears it a lot. And, um, and, and, but to, to just even, I look at Ashley like if I were a 12 year old girl right now, I would be listening to Ashley McBride. She would be the Mm. person I would want to be like. So this is definitely a mutual uh, admiration (laughs) between me and Ashley, because if, if I, if I were a 12 or 13 year old girl and I were looking for that person in country music right now that I wanted to be, be like, she would be the one I'd be bugging my mom for that fan club packet and the t-shirts take me to the shows. I want to meet her. And if I met her, I would have been all kinds of giddy and crazy yeah. and like, but yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's, and it's a full circle. Thing. That, and that definitely is happening. Of course, Ashley McBride, the devil I know. Congratulations, by the way. I know you're going to be going out uh, in the fall with Cody Johnson on the leather tour. Tonight, you're playing the Opry. We just adore you. Thank you for taking the time to buzz in and surprise this woman right here on set. Oh, I'm so happy to. Thank you, Ashley. I love you. I appreciate you calling. I had no idea. No idea. <laughs> Thank you. you. Too, I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. <laughs> We're hanging out with Terry Clark. This is On the Record. A lot more when we come back. Stay with us. We wound up somehow randomly in a text exchange, and neither one of us knew who we were talking to. And I finally just went, Kelly? like with five question marks. And then she said, oh my God, this is Terry Clark. Is it? And then it was all on, game on. Welcome back to you on the record here on Nashville's Music Row, spending time with Terry Clark, a brand new album called Take Two, eight songs on this album. Of course, prior to the break, we spoke with Ashley McBride, who surprised you with a call <laughs> in, of course, doing better things to do. Breaking <laughs> down these songs, as a producer now, of, of course, you know, you know these songs better than anybody, mm-hmm. matching up the artists with the songs. Did you, did you kind of throw the songs out there and say choose, or did you go, you would be good for this one? A little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Um, Ashley, I really wanted her to do better things Mm -hmm. to do with me because of everything she just said on that phone call, and and I'm the closest to her out of everybody. We know each other the best. Um, And, you know, Lainey uh, Lainey Wilson, I really, I thought Poor Pitiful Me was perfect for her. It's got that rootsy thing, the Ronstadt vibe, um, her and her bell bottoms and her She's just, she's just really cool, and she's, she's like, doing I, so well. I always feel like Lainey is like this racehorse, just waiting to get out of that gate. She's yeah. got so much energy, yeah. and it seemed like a perfect match. And mm-hmm. to look at this song 
and the history that this song has had. And now yeah. for you to bring it back, kind of a second time. It's been the, one of the, the most recorded song I've ever recorded twice. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and, and uh, she, we had so much fun. And actually, Lainey recorded her vocal on this a year and a half ago. Oh, it, wow. it, like a lot has happened since she came in and did that. But we are, um, you know, we might be doing a couple things together uh, here in the near future. I can't exactly announce or talk about, but you never know. You never know. Season where, three where we're with pop Terry up Clark together. back yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> we're more surprises. Yeah. But, but also having Kelly Clarkson uh, on this. She, if, yeah. You know, when I mentioned, you know, having these love songs and and really this vulnerability, I think if I were you, it was the first time that we saw that vulnerable side. This was mm -hmm. a solo right. For you, by the way. Yeah. This, I mean, you know that, but I don't think, if they may not know, an amazing song. And still today, I think, one of the standouts out of all of your catalog. Oh, thank you. I, the best songs come from real places. And I was married for the first time, very, very young. We didn't communicate that well. And, you know, I would call my friends and ask for marriage counseling over the phone. And I'd spend three hours on the phone with them. Mm. And then one night I got off the phone after my single friend was telling me, you know, the grass isn't green or it's tough out there. And I got off the phone with her and I sat down at the table. And 90 minutes later, I had this song. And Kelly, um, you know, and I do think I got my record deal in 1994, partly because I sang that song in my audition uh, when I auditioned for Mercury. Now, you know, fast forward to now. I was just telling my management um, that Kelly Clarkson would have been a, a dream artist to have anywhere on this project on any song. And we we're all like, now, how are we going to get a hold of Kelly Clarkson? Like, they have connections and stuff, but you got to do it the right way. And right. how do you finesse this so it's just not a hard no because she's really busy? And But I knew she loved 90s women. Mm -hmm. 90s female country in particular, and she had done better things to do on her Kelly Oki portion of her show. We wound up somehow randomly in a text exchange, and neither one of us knew who we were talking to. I don't know, modern technology. She thought she was texting her manager. I didn't even know Kelly had my number. I was like, clearly she had your number. Like I had that. no idea she had my number. I'm like, wow. and she's, and I'm like, who is this? And she wouldn't tell me who she was in case I wasn't who she thought I was. And it goes back and <laughs> forth like this for I don't know how long. And then I finally texted, she dropped a bunch of hints as to who she was. And I was still like, God, that sounds like Kelly Clarkson, but why on earth would she be texting me? <laughs> And then I, I texted Reba and I said, is this Kelly Clarkson's phone number? And Reba texted me back right away. She said, yeah, that's her number. And so I just texted back after all this. And I went, I went radio silent for a good like 30 minutes because I thought some weirdo got a hold of my number <laughs> that was pretending to be somebody else. And then I finally just went, Kelly, like with five question marks. And then she said, oh my God, this is Terry Clark. Is it? And I, I, then it was all on, game on. And, and so I kind of used the opportunity of an accidental text exchange to, to put her on the spot. And she said she would love to do the project. And I said, well, these are the songs that we still haven't recorded. And she chose If I Were You, which was very flattering to me since I wrote it. And it was such a personal song. Uh, and so instrumental in me getting my record deal in the first place. You're going to be touring with talking about, I'm sure, a lot of this music mm -hmm. and maybe some more surprises down the road. Yeah. Also headlining for the first time, the Ryman Auditorium, which is amazing. And everybody said, why is this your first time? But boy, it is going to be a big night. And we are so excited for what's to come. Terry Clark, take two, brand new duets project. It is out now. Thank you for watching On the Record from the John Deere stage. Thank you to this woman, Terry Clark. Thank we'll see you. you next time.